Good morning everybody. Today I want to show you a awesome book that I was lucky enough to come across and some of the things that are in it. And um, I'm just going to thumb through it really fast. Um, there's just a whole bunch of activities and games in it. Tangram things. There's a lot of games and stuff here in here that I haven't even touched on. There's things you can um, do with um, freezing air rods, some dot to dots, this one's kind of cool, count by fives, there's like count by twos, there's a few different things like that, puzzles, tracing activities, sequencing cards, so that's just kind of a really quick overview. Some of the activities I made back in the days I made these when my son, my oldest, was a baby because I was smart. I knew that I wouldn't have time later and I was right. I like colored these and everything. So like this is one of the games called the hiking game. And um, what you do is you have these cards with these digits. And so for example, there's 9,235. You would draw, you would start with the thousands place. And so I would take the number that is in the thousands place, so it would be a nine, so I would move forward, nine, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, then I would read what it said, I'd have to go back one space, then the hundreds place, so on my next turn, I would take whatever number I drew, it was in the hundreds place, so maybe a one, and then I could go forward one, and anyway, you go through it until you get home, and so I've played this game a few times with my kids, and it's really helped my oldest, too. On the other side, there's another game I played, made. I haven't played this game yet. It's a ski slope game. And this one is with um, division. So you take, for example, 11, um, 90 divided by 11 is 88, with remainder 2. And so I would take the remainder, and then I would get to move forward 2. And then, you know, you work your way down the slope, and whoever goes through the slope cycle three times wins first. So that's another game. There's a very simple game over here called Telephone. And you have all of these number cards, and you shake a dice, and you go around through, and whatever you land on, you get that number, and so you collect a number. And then <clears throat> the idea is to collect numbers to the, the first one to be able to call one of these people on the phone. So that's that game. Safari game. I made these cute little cards. I colored these. That's why they're colored. Um, and you get these pieces, and um, you land on these. You land on the piece, and then when you land on it, you get to collect an animal. And so it's just a counting game. You just have a simple die, and you know you get three, and you count three, and it's just super basic. So that's that game. They have a game. I haven't formally done this game yet, but they have this cute little um cute little dollhouse and there's all these different pieces and then there's cards there's cards that say um you know five plus three or whatever is eight and so then you do eight and then once you get it right then you get to place the thing in here and then there's some of the cards that will say things like um a, there was a fire and you have to take one of your pieces out or something like that so that's that game oh and on the other side very simple counting game. You start here, if and you just have a die, and you go that number of spaces, and if you land on one of these, you get to count the apples. And however many apples there are, you get to go forward that many spaces, and whoever gets to the end wins. Super simple, basic, fast game. So, I mean, there's, there's from the very beginning elementary stuff to later on. <laughs> um, for example, this Trizo game is for older kids. You have um, three dice. Um, and your own markers, and you shake the three dice and say, and you have to use each one of those three numbers, either adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing, to make one of these numbers. So, um, six times six times six is two hundred and sixteen. That's why that's the biggest number. These are all the numbers that are possible, and you try to get three in a row. So you have three dice, use those numbers three times, and then you get a part, put a marker, and the first person to get three in a row wins. So that's kind of a fun game. And this game is similar, that you have the three dice and you try to 
and you have to use them. You're supposed to have four markers, but we, when we played it with four markers, it's just like as soon as somebody got four up here, then they would win, and it was kind of a boring game the rest of the game. So we use it with like two. You have two markers, and you have to get both of your pieces to the um, starship before you can move on to the lunar station, and then you have to get them all there before you can go on to the moon. And so you just... Oh, that's another fun game. And the shooting gallery, you I made one for each of the kids. See, I don't have time to color anymore. <laughs> um, you try to shoot um, the other person's target. So you're, it's a two-player game. You shake a die, you get three, and so you try to shoot the other person's one that equals three. Two plus one is three, so I would get to put a marker here, and then the other person would shake their dice, and you take turns shooting each other's markers. That's that one. And then this game is similar to the other ones too. You have three dice, you shake it, and you put your markers on according to what you get, and that's kind of fun. And then one of my favorite things are these um, these stories, and you just tell a story. Um, for example, these are two crabs that both like to collect things, and Motley Crab Adder is always just combining things in any random order and so you use that for adding because he's just he just adds them anything that he wants he can add them together whereas sir crab multiplier only gathers things neatly and so he's collecting things in groups of four so he does it in a much more organized um, way so then you can tell a story to the kids and you say you know who would be collecting who would collecting you know, things this way. So, for example, if somebody gave you five pennies and then another person gave you three pennies, um, and you would combine them and you'd add them, or, you know, which one which one of these crabs would be, would want to do that? So, you know, it's kind of a story thing. And then there's the same thing for, for subtraction and division. The impeccable twin dividers divide things neatly, whereas the scruffy twin subtractors will just grab them apart. And then they have the Great Legalizer, and this guy is handy for um, for um, when you're adding, you know, pennies or whatever. Once you have nine pennies, you can't you can't have more than nine pennies or whatever. You'd have to switch to a dime or I don't know, like you can't have more than wow, I can't explain this. <laughs> you can't have more than ten pennies like in in the ones place because once you have 10 then you have to go to the tens place and you can't have more than 10 in the tens place before you have to go to the hundreds so he's just making sure that you follow the law and you don't have any more there and there's some games and stuff in the book that that you would use the great legalizer and then the great the magnificent equalizer wants things to be equal on both sides so that's pretty simple anyway that's just some of the some of the activities that we've done with this book and that's what it is. Thanks.